Hi, my name is Professor Dr. Devaruti Haldar and I am the Managing Director Honorary for Center for Cyber Victim Counseling. In this session, I am going to discuss about electronic record and its legal implication under the Indian Information Technology Law. First, let us understand about electronic records. The common understanding says an electronic record is information recorded by a computer that is produced or received in the initiation conduct or completion of an agency or individual activity. Examples of electronic records include email messages, word processed documents, electronic spreadsheets, digital images and databases. Now, let us understand the meaning of electronic record from the perspective of IT Act 2000 amended in 2008. The first and foremost thing that we should understand is the term data. According to section 2O, data means a representation of information, knowledge, facts, concepts or instructions which are being prepared or have been prepared in a formalized manner and is intended to be processed is being processed or has been processed in a computer system or computer network and may be in any form including computer printouts, magnetic or optical storage media, punched cards, punched tapes or stored internally in the memory of the computer. Next is the term electronic form. Section 2R of the IT Act 2000 amended in 2008 defines electronic form. According to this section, electronic form with reference to information means any information generated, sent, received or stored in media, magnetic, optical, computer memory microfilm, computer-generated microfiche, or similar device. Now, let us know the definition of electronic record under the Information Technology Act 2000, amended in 2008. Section 2T defines electronic record as data record or data generated, image or sound stored, received or sent in an electronic form or microfilm or computer generated microfiche. We must understand that electronic records are necessarily used for the purpose of e-governance and e-commerce. Now, let us know the basic legal implications of electronic records. Electronic records are alternative to paper-based records. They are legally recognized. For the purpose of e-governance, they should be made accessible for subsequent reference. Retention of electronic record for specific period is a unique feature of e-governance. Electronic records can be attributed, acknowledged and 
dispatched in unique ways which are specific to e-commerce. They can be secure electronic records by virtue of Section 14 of the Information Technology Act 2000 amended in 2008. Electronic records are admissible as evidences under certain circumstances. Body corporates are duty-bound to protect the confidentiality and integrity of electronic records if maintained by them. Body corporates are those data retainers who create and data processed and they retain these data for further necessity or needs. Section 3 discusses about authentication of electronic records. Under subclause 1, it says, subject to the provision of this section, any subscriber may authenticate an electronic record by affixing his digital signature. Subsection 2 says, the authentication of the electronic record shall be effected by the use of asymmetric crypto system and hash function which envelop and transform the initial electronic record into another electronic record. We also must understand about hash function. This provision also defines it by stating that hash function means an algorithm mapping or translation of one sequence of bits into another generally smaller set known as hash result such that an electronic record yields the same hash result every time the algorithm is executed with the same electronic record as its input making it computer computationally infeasible. Further, Subclause A says to deprive or to reconstruct the original electronic record from the hash result produced by the algorithm. Subclause B says that two electronic records can produce the same hash result using the algorithm. Subsection 3 of Section 3 says any person by the use of a public key of the subscriber can verify the electronic record. Subsection 4 says the private key and the public key are unique to the subscriber and constitute functioning key pair. Now, let us understand about the significance of electronic records from the perspective of electronic governance. Section 4 discusses about legal recognition of electronic records. It says, where any law provides that information or any other matter shall be in writing or in the typewritten or printed form, then, notwithstanding anything contained in such law, such requirement shall be deemed to have been satisfied if such information or matter is rendered or made available in an electronic form and accessible so as to be usable for a subsequent reference. Section 6 discusses about use of electronic records in government and its agencies. Now, let us understand about different uses of electronic records as has been demonstrated under Section 6. It says, where any law provides for the filing of any form, application or any other document with any office authority 
body or agency owned or controlled by the appropriate government in a particular manner the issue or grant of any license permit sanction or approval by whatever name called in a particular manner the receipt or payment of money in a particular manner then notwithstanding anything contained in any other law for the time being in force such requirement shall be deemed to have been satisfied if such filing issue grant receipt or payment as the case may be is effected by means of such electronic form as may be prescribed by the appropriate government section 6 also discusses about mandate for specific formats under sub clause 2 it says the appropriate government may for the purpose of subsection 1 by rules prescribe the manner and format in which such electronic records shall be filed created or issued the manner or method of payment of any fee or charges for filing creation or issue any electronic record under clause a section 7 discusses about retention of electronic records and its exception again this is a unique feature of e governance and also e commerce subsection 1 says where any law provides that documents records or information shall be retained for any specific period then that requirement shall be deemed to have been satisfied if such documents records or information are retained in the electronic form the information contained therein remains accessible so as to be usable for a subsequent reference the electronic record is retained in the format in which it was originally generated sent or received or in a format which can be demonstrated to represent accurately the information originally generated sent or received the details which will facilitate the identification of the origin destination date time of dispatch or receipt of such electronic record are available in the electronic record the exception clause says this clause does not apply to any information which is automatically generated solely for the purpose of enabling an electronic record to be dispatched or received most importantly this section also says nothing in this section shall apply to any law that expressly provides for the retention of documents records or information in the form of electronic records publication of rules regulation etc in electronic gadget now let us understand about audit of documents etc in electronic form section 7 says where in any law for the time being in force there is a provision for audit of documents records or information that provision shall also be applicable for audit of documents records or information processed and maintained in electronic form it must be noted that auditing of documents etc in electronic form is extremely important for cyber security purposes now let us understand about publication of rules regulations etc in electronic gadget as has been discussed under section 8 it says where any law provides that any rule regulation order by law notification or any other matter shall be published in the official gadget then such requirement shall be deemed to have been satisfied 
if such rule, regulation, order, by law, notification or any other matter is published in the official gadget or electronic gadget. However, this section also has a limitation clause. It says, where any rule, regulation, order, by law, notification or any other matters published in the official gadget or electronic gadget, the date of publication shall be deemed to be the date of the gadget which was first published in any form which means that if that particular regulation, order, etc. was published on a certain date, the updating date of that particular regulation, order, etc. on certain web page, etc. should not be considered as the publication date of that particular regulation, order, bylaw, etc. Let us now understand about the acceptance of documents in electronic form and the law says that such acceptance should not be strictly mandatory in electronic form. Let us now understand about the legal understanding from the perspective of IT Act. Section 9 speaks about this and says sections 6, 7 and 8 not to confer right to insist documents should be accepted in electronic form. It says, nothing contained in sections 6, 7 and 8 shall confer a right upon any person to insist that any ministry or department of the central government or the state government or any authority or body established by or under any law or controlled or funded by the central government or the state government should accept, issue, create, retain and preserve any document in the form of electronic records or affect any monetary transaction in the electronic form. This is a beneficial provision which is actually made keeping in mind that in India there are many persons who are still not digitally literate. where in a contract formation, the communication of proposals, the acceptance of proposals, the revocation of proposals and acceptances, as the case may be, are expressed in electronic form or by means of an electronic record, such contract shall not be deemed to be unenforceable solely on the ground that such electronic form or means was used for that purpose. Now, this was actually the main purpose of section 10a which speaks about the validity of contracts formed through electronic means. Again, it actually speaks about the validity of contracts or legality of the contracts made in electronic format. Now, let us understand about the attribution of electronic records which is discussed under Section 11. According to Section 11, an electronic record shall be attributed to the originator. If it was sent by the originator himself, by a person who had the authority to act on behalf of the originator in respect of that electronic record or by an information system programmed by or on behalf of the originator to operate automatically. Section 12 deals with acknowledgement of receipt. This was actually modified by IT Act amended in 2008. 
according to section 12 where the originator has not stipulated that the acknowledgement of receipt of electronic record be given in a particular form or by a particular method an acknowledgement may be given by any communication by the addressee automated or otherwise or any conduct of the addressee sufficient to indicate to the originator that the electronic record has been received. A very good example could be the blue tick or double tick of WhatsApp messages which can actually indicate that the recipient has seen or received the message. Just a blue tick or the double tick may also fulfill the need of section 12 under certain circumstances. Subsection 2, however, says where the originator has stipulated that the electronic record shall be binding only on receipt of an acknowledgement of such electronic record by him, then unless acknowledgement has been so received, the electronic record shall be deemed to have been never sent by the originator. Subsection 3 further says where the originator has not stipulated that the electronic record shall be binding only on receipt of such acknowledgement and the acknowledgement has not been received by the originator for within the time specified or agreed or if no time has been specified or agreed to within a reasonable time then the originator may give notice to the addressee stating that no acknowledgement has been received by him and specifying a reasonable time by which the acknowledgement must be received by him and if no acknowledgement is received within the aforesaid time limit he may after giving notice to the addressee treat the electronic record as though it has never been sent. Now we should understand about time and place of dispatch and receipt of electronic records that has been discussed under section 13. Subclause 1 says, save as otherwise agreed between the originator and the addressee, the dispatch of an electronic record occurs when it enters a computer resource outside the control of the originator. Subsection 2 says, save as otherwise agreed between the originator and the addressee, the time of receipt of an electronic record shall be determined as follows, namely, If the addressee has designated a computer resource for the purpose of receiving electronic records, receipt occurs at the time when the electronic record enters the designated computer resource or if the electronic record is sent to a computer resource of the addressee that is not designated computer resource, Receipt occurs at the time when the electronic record is retrieved by the addressee. If the addressee has not designated a computer resource along with a specified timing, if any, receipt occurs when the electronic records enters the computer resource of the addressee. Save as otherwise agreed between the originator and the addressee, an electronic record is deemed to be dispatched at the place where the originator has his place of business and is deemed to be received at the place where the addressee has his place of business. The provisions of subsection 2 shall apply notwithstanding that the place where the computer resource is located may be different from the place 
where the electronic record is deemed to have been received under subsection 3. For the purpose of this section, section 13 further says, if the originator or the addressee has more than one place of business, the principal place of business shall be the place of business. If the originator or the addressee does not have a place of business, his usual place of residence shall be deemed to be the place of business. This actually is derived from the general contract laws. Again, subclause C says usual place of residence in relation to a body corporate, that means a company, means the place where it is registered. Now, let us discuss about the admissibility of electronic record. First, let us understand about the present stand. As has been understood in Anwar PV versus PK Bashir and others in the case of 2012, computer output is not admissible without compliance of Section 65B of the Indian Evidence Act. It is as admissible as long as the original record etc. is preserved well. The old rule of admissibility of tape recorded voice under section 63 of Evidence Act is still accepted. Identification of voice etc. must be followed in such cases of admissibility of computer record or electronic records. This has been decided in Simran Pal Singh versus State of Himachal Pradesh in 2012. For the admissibility of electronic records, the four conditions of Section 65B of the Indian Evidence Act needs to be fulfilled. The four conditions are the electronic record containing the information should have been produced by the computer during the period over which the same was regularly used to store or process information for the purpose of any activity regularly carried on over that period by the person having lawful control over the use of that, that computer. The information of the kind contained in electronic record or of the kind from which the information is derived was regularly fed into the computer in the ordinary course of the said activity. Necessity of certificate under section 65B of the Evidence Act should also be followed within these four rules. 65b subclause 4 says if it is desired to give a statement in any proceedings pertaining to an electronic record it is permissible provided the following conditions are satisfied there must be a certificate which identifies the electronic record containing the statement The certificate must describe the manner in which the electronic record was produced. The certificate must furnish the particulars of the device involved in the production of that record.
Now comes the question as who can give the certificate under section 65B subsection 4. It says the certificate must be signed by a person occupying a responsible official position in relation to the operation of the relevant device. This was actually decided in ARK Shipping Company Limited versus GRT Ship Management Private Limited in 2007. Thank you.